I've been watching quite a lot of Real Sociedad recently. Outside of the big two in La Liga, they're one of the best teams this year. They're sitting in third place at the time of recording, and tactically, they're pretty interesting. Most top teams nowadays play some variation of 4-3-3. There's also quite a lot of five at the back, but very rarely do we see the once popular 442 diamond. It's worth analyzing for a few reasons, and not least is the presence of a pure number 10, something you don't see too much anymore, which I think is a shame. There's a bit of magic around the number 10, from classic players like Dennis Bergkamp to the likes of Mesut Ozil, and the man we're talking about today, David Silva, who at 37 years old has kind of taken Real Sociedad to the next level, and perhaps proof that the number 10 is still viable at the elite level. So today I want to take a closer look at this Real Sociedad team and see how they're giving life to this classic role. Right from the offset, this system from Imanal Alguacil goes against a lot of the principles favoured at the top level. And to understand the number 10 role, we first need an overview of it. Most 4-3-3s are set up to be very wide, with wingers hugging the touchline in order to stretch the defensive line and generate as much space as possible. That means if your opponent stays compact, you'll always have an outlet in space. But this 4-4-2 diamond has no permanent winger. Instead, it has two centre forwards who have license to drift wider and that number 10, making it much more narrow than most modern attacking systems. Here, rather than generating space using overloads and switches of play, Real Sociedad are much more interested in close range combinations. They want their attacking players close to each other, between the lines, and ideally, in more central areas. Because if you can achieve that, if you can end up here, running at your opponent's back four with forwards ahead of you, you pose more of an immediate threat than if you've got a winger out wide with the ball. Of course, that's easier said than done, so how do La Real achieve this? Well, I've identified three principles that are essential in their build-up play, and yes, heavily revolve around that number 10. So let's start with principle one, directness. While La Real have one of the higher possession averages in La Liga, that doesn't mean they're completely committed to playing through the thirds. In fact, when it comes to how quickly they move the ball from back to front, they're more direct than, for example, Barcelona and Real Madrid. That's very much a product of this system. You'll notice when they're building up, the widest point of the team is actually the fullbacks, while most players ahead of the ball are concentrated in central areas. The pivot, however, is pretty isolated, and that means the only progressive option, and the safest option actually, is to go all the way into the forwards where although the players are under pressure, they have plenty of support around them. And very often the first pass is a direct one into your number 10, who's the specialist at finding those pockets, either to turn or bring those around him into play. That's the first function of the number 10's role and gives them a positional freedom that we'll talk about more later. But the second principle of the system and probably the most important is the third man. The third man is a universal footballing principle, but it's especially important to this team because of how tight and congested it gets in the middle of the pitch. It's a way to unlock players who would otherwise be marked. So take this example, all these central players are man marked, the defenders are goal side of your forwards and can step up to press, and the passing lane to your pivot is blocked. So what do you do? Well, you can play a third man pass, first into the centre forward, who can then immediately bounce it back to your pivot. They can then look up and find runners in behind. And after you've seen this once, you realise Lareal are doing it pretty frequently. The benefit is that the receiving player, the third man, can immediately look up and play forward into runners in behind. This is also partly why Lareal play two centre forwards, so when they unlock players between the lines like this, there's always someone making that run. The final principle is overloads, and that's a pretty simple one. Real Sociedad aren't shy in committing a lot of players around the ball. Again, going against a lot of modern footballing philosophy, which is about correct spacing and zone occupation. But with La Real, you'll often see five, six, or even seven players converging around the ball. That makes things very tight and intricate, but it also means you're able to generate numerical advantages. Here, La Real have six players in the vicinity. Absolutely nobody out on the left-hand side, but the presence of David Silva, of Alexander Sorlot, Zubi Mendy the pivot coming across, creates a four versus three on the flank, and Mikel Marino finds himself as a spare man, where he turns and can find another of those runs in behind. Are you starting to notice a pattern? Between their willingness to be direct, the third man principles, and the overloads, Lareal are able to unlock players between the lines who can then find runners, and that's the fundamental goal of the system. 
though it's by no means easy to achieve even using these principles. The proximity of players means that opponents can be extremely compact, it gets very congested, so without serious technical quality, this game plan doesn't work. That brings me back to our number 10. You've probably seen him already in a few of these clips, but I want to take a closer look at what he's doing, because not only is he central to this system, it's an extremely difficult role to pull off. So there are a couple of things I want to point out about David Silva's role here. The first I alluded to earlier, which is positional sense. There's a high degree of freedom in the number 10's positioning. They're not assigned to a zone or an area of the pitch. They're essentially a free man, able to create overloads or just get between the lines. That leaves you with a lot of decisions to make, both on a macro level in terms of where on the pitch you should be, but also on the micro level, getting the angles and distances right when you're receiving a pass. Because of the level of variation in your positioning, there's clearly a high degree of intuition here as well as coaching, and obviously David Silva is a natural. Then it's onto ball reception, arguably the most difficult part because you're having to react to things so, so quickly. The action of the defenders, for example, do you need to move the ball on quickly or are they tight enough that you can turn them? Then there's the speed and trajectory of the pass, figuring out your body position so you can turn fluidly into space, and the most ridiculous, the movement of your teammates in relation to your opponents and the space, which if you're a five-dimensional alien like David Silva, allows you to do this, or this. And then there's actual ball usage, which in this system is very much about finding those runners ahead of you. So vision is important, but even more fundamental is weight of pass something that looks simple but is very easy to get wrong. All in all, you have a role that, honestly, very few players could perform to a high level. David Silva is one of them, and Real Sociedad are pretty blessed to have him, especially in a system that really relies on this kind of intelligent combination player. But Imanol's departure from the status quo for the sake of playing a number 10 is clearly paying off. They're third in the league, and not by accident. Although they rank 10th in the league for total shots, they actually rank 3rd for expected goals, meaning they create fewer chances, but those chances are generally higher quality. In fact, they have the highest percentage of shots on target in the league. So it makes you wonder whether others could explore systems like this, with players in these kind of offensive free roles. Of course, you need a player this good with this kind of skill set, and actually developing the spatial awareness and decision making of an elite number 10 takes a lot of additional training. So, just in case we've got any budding footballers out there, I actually want to introduce you guys to a tool that you can use to help develop those skills. It's called Be Your Best, and it's football training in virtual reality, made by a team of football and technology experts from Norway to help improve your cognitive performance. The main skill that Be Your Best trains is your scanning, but you can also train vision, decision making and memory. To do so, you'll play through over 800 scenarios recreated from real top level games, like this one featuring Modric. You'll be playing from a player's perspective as you complete scenarios and receive feedback on your performance. Now, Be Your Best is used by both amateur and professional players all over the world, with Arsenal star Martin Odegaard even using it during his injury period. And the results are backed by science. A recent nine week study saw players improve their scan rate by 28% thanks to the training. So you can get 20% off your first month or off your first year by using code PUREST20 at checkout. Just go to beyourbest.com to get started. The link will also be in the description. And you'll not only be improving your game, but supporting the channel as well. So everybody wins. I'm going to leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if there are any other teams or players that you'd like me to cover tactically and make sure you subscribe to the channel to see the latest content. So I hope you have a great day or a great evening and I'll see you soon. Take care.